Well, holy flippity flip flop flap and smokes, everyone. A CEO is now warning that banks are facing a national liquidity crisis. And also, we got a new report from Bloomberg that says that banks are tightening their lending centers very, very quickly and a credit freeze could be coming. People, there is so much happening with the major US banks, I can't even keep up. That's why I'm updating you every single day on what's happening with the banks because this is going to be one of the biggest financial crises since 2008. The banks are in trouble and they're setting aside billions and billions of dollars for these loans that are about to go bad. So everyone, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the news, the facts and the data. Okay, look at this everyone. Big banks don't have any liquidity. Fundrise CEO warns impending national liquidity crisis. So that is a big, big statement everyone. Banks do not have much, if any, liquidity at all. And we're going to get into what kind of assets these banks are in trouble with in a moment. So it says here, a lack of liquidity has widened the gap between investors buying and selling treasuries, creating big swings in bond yields. So that's right, everyone. We have seen huge volatility in the bond market. And now that the Federal Reserve is no longer in there buying up everything, now that the money printer has stopped, the treasury market is facing a huge crisis. And even US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has even warned that the US government may have to get involved and start buying up these bonds, which will be weird. It'll be literally the government buying their own debt. That shift means more volatility with rate sensitive growth stocks being vulnerable as borrowing costs rise after a series of recent Federal Reserve Fed rate hikes. But the CEO of Washington DC based financial tech company operating on an online investment platform says liquidity issues are affecting the economy far beyond bonds. So he's right there as well. We have seen tech stocks absolutely get hammered. Look for example at Facebook, Amazon, Tesla. They're falling and falling rapidly many of them down over 70% year to date. But he's warning that this is affecting the economy far beyond the bond market. So let's dig a bit deeper, everyone. He believes that the US economy is heading for a potentially catastrophic liquidity crisis. Banks making real estate loans cannot cover interest rates that have doubled, he said. So wow, this is shocking everyone. We've seen banks, they've issued loans that say 2.753%, but now interest rates have more to double to over 7%. So these banks are now facing huge, huge losses. And also these investors that brought these mortgage-backed securities, they're facing big, big losses as well. The natural instinct is to look at borrowers as a source of defaults, but there are circumstances where borrowers don't default, but intermediately lenders who have taken the loans and levered them up and up will eventually default, he said. So I don't know about you everyone, but this is starting to give me deja vu of 2008. We saw how the banks took on huge amounts of risk. They created these toxic subprime mortgages, sold them off to investors. Well, maybe now borrower's credit is better than in 2008, but these investors are now facing a different issue with these assets is now that interest rates have gone up, they can get better yields on other assets that are safer. These mortgage backed security prices are absolutely plummeting. And like he warned, it may not be the borrower that would default because their credit is okay, but what happens if the lender actually defaults? Miller also believes that lenders who borrow against their own loans won't be able to withstand the skyrocketing interest rates and will be especially susceptible to liquidity issues. So it's absolutely crazy, Ron. You have some lenders that are actually borrowing against their own loans. Now, normally in a time when interest rates are going down, this is okay, but interest rates have more than doubled and they may even triple. So these lenders are facing bankruptcy. So here are six things that could trigger the national liquidity crisis. Five trillion of asset-backed lending now exists outside of banks with a lot more debt and a lot less liquidity than there used to be. Corporate borrowers have 300% more debt than before the 2008 financial crisis. So this is very, very worrying everyone. There's $5 trillion worth of debt outside of the banks. And also debt, why this crash is going to be so much worse than 2008, is there's 300% more debt than there was during the 2008 financial crisis. But during this crash, interest rates are going to go up. They're not going to go down like they did in 2008. So all those people that could refinance their home, refinance their loans to lower interest rates to bail them out of 2008, they're not going to be able to do that this time. Any companies with real estate loans during the next few years have a lot more debt in the system than people realized. Many unregulated non-bank lenders, mortgage real estate investment trusts, private equity funds, commercial mortgage-backed securities, residential mortgage-backed securities, and collateralized loan obligations are involved in making loans banks can't cover. That's exactly right, everyone. What have we seen over the past few months? We've seen many real estate firms and many mortgage brokers go bust. They're facing bankruptcy because they issued these loans when interest rates were cheap. Now interest rates are skyrocketed and they're being exposed. 
And again, just like 2008, these commercial mortgage-backed securities, these residential mortgage-backed securities, and these collateralized loan obligations, they're going to cause a financial crisis. Listen to this. I met with some of the biggest banks in the world who told me they don't have any liquidity because of rising interest rates. This is going to play out. The question is, how bad will it be? So this is very worrying, everyone. We have an insider here telling us that the banks, the emperor has no clothes. Small businesses are going to have a problem with all types of loans, including consumer, auto, corporate, and real estate. The biggest borrower of them all is this hidden borrower, which is actually the lender. Retail and office property will hit a wall. Offices used to be the most favored institutional asset class. What's going to happen, I believe, is that office and retail will become unfinanceable, and when a loan comes due, there'll be no money for it, he said. Working from home made a lot of office space obsolete. So that's something I don't hear the media talking about. They speak a lot about the residential uh, real estate market, but they're not talking about the commercial market. And the reason for that is because the commercial real estate market is crashing right now with a lot of people working from home part-time or working from home full-time. A lot of this commercial office space has become obsolete and commercial real estate, like I said, is falling in value and also interest rates are skyrocketing. So all these banks that made these loans for these uh, commercial real estate projects, they're going to be facing huge, huge losses. But people, don't just take this man's word from it. We just got a new report from Bloomberg and banks are tightening up their books because they say there is going to be a painful recession coming. Look at this. US banks are tightening lending centers, raising the risk of a recession. The Federal Reserve isn't the only one tightening credit. Commercial banks are too. So could this lead to some kind of credit freeze, everyone? Let's keep reading. And that spells trouble for the US economy. The proportion of U.S. banks tightening terms on loans for medium and large businesses and for commercial real estate rose last quarter, just like I was saying, everyone, to levels usually seen during recessions. Like I've been saying, everyone, we are already in a recession. They tried to deny we're in a recession during the first half of the year. Then we had some technicals that rebounded the GDP growth in Q3. But in real terms, when you factor in inflation, when you factor in people's wages falling uh, in real terms and the cost of living skyrocketing, we are already in a recession. Lending standards for credit cards and other consumer loans also became more restrictive as the Fed raised interest rates and the economic outlook darkened. And I'll bring up this chart here, Run US banks get more stingy. Standards on business loans tightened. So look at these red marks here, everyone. This is when there's been recessions in the 1990s, early 2000s, 2008, and 2020. And we're starting to see that lending standards are getting tighter and getting close to what they were during 2020 and 2008. The tightening in standards by senior loan officers goes part and parcel with significantly higher rates and a shrinking balance sheet by the Federal Reserve. So to put it in simple terms, the banks aren't getting their free cheap credit anymore, so they're now tightening their books as they know defaults are about to rise. The increased stringency by the commercial banks will likely affect the economy with a lag, as business and household borrowers find it more difficult to obtain credit and eventually scale back their spending. So while growth in the closing months of 2022 looks pretty solid, that's what they say, I don't think it looks solid at all, there's really a high probability of a recession over the coming quarter of around 75%. I think it's more like 100% because we're already in one. They warn they see a downturn beginning in the third quarter of 2023 that ends up raising unemployment rate to 5.6% from October's level of 3.7%. So let's listen to what the banks are now telling the Federal Reserve. Banks told the Fed they had tightened lending standards on commercial and industrial loans for a variety of reasons, including a more uncertain or less favorable economic outlook and reduced tolerance for risk. A significant number also cited decreased liquidity, like we just spoke about, in a secondary market for such loans and less aggressive competition from other banks or other non-bank lenders. So this confirms a report we're just reading from Yahoo of that CEO warning there is going to be a liquidity crisis and also the banks are preparing for a recession. Now listen to what they're saying now about the billions and billions of dollars they're putting aside for these huge defaults that will be coming. The industry set aside $13 billion in the third quarter for expected credit losses, up from $10 billion in the second quarter. According to S&P Global Marketing Intelligence data, it was the sixth straight quarter that provisions for loan losses were increased, S&P said. So that's right, everyone. Every single month, banks are starting to put away more and more and more for these loans that are about to go bad. 
And if you think it's bad now when we're not even in an official recession, wait until we do actually enter into a real painful recession when interest rates get even higher. Because remember, they're not even at the peak yet. They're going to go minimum to 5%. Mortgage rates are going to go higher. People are in all-time debt with their credit cards and also their real incomes are going down. This is a recipe for disaster, people. So everyone, I know I sound like a broken record, but you need to prepare because 2023 is going to be a very painful economic year. But everyone, what do you think about all of this? Let me know down below. Now, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers to watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.